Yunnan is a place that is hard to define. The locals may talk about delicious foods such as ham, wu shan, pineapple rice, rice noodles, jie fen, fried uo kuai, or more. They may talk about festivals such as water splashing, xu yan yan, torch festival, third month fair, fire worship, lo sar, or more. And when they talk about these, you may hear Mandarin, the Sang language, yi, honey, dai, nya si, or more. This is Yunnan, home to 26 long-dwelling ethnic groups among all 56 ethnic groups in China. But its diversity is far more than this, with snow-capped mountains that stand silently, rainforests that nurture lives, mighty rivers that rush down, and spectacular plateau lakes. Yunnan is China's most diverse and colorful province. Many people know the famous phrases that describe Yunnan, wind, flower, snow, and moon and the south of colorful clouds. But few would ask for the reason behind the diversity of this land. In this video, we will answer the question from a geographical perspective. Then you will realize that all of this is a magnum opus of time and space. It all started with an epic collision 65 million years ago, when the Indian Ocean Plate crashed into the Eurasian Plate, dramatically uplifting the Qingzai Shizang Plateau and Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. Because of the enormous forces, the land began to rise and the Earth's surface changed. Yunnan started to take on a new look. If you look down at Yunnan from space, you will see a crack that is so huge and striking, which seems to split Yunnan down the middle. It is where the Red River Fault lies. It roughly divides Yunnan into west and east. On its west side, the land gradually rose, cracked, and folded until parallel ranges formed. They run from northwest to southeast like pleated skirts. This is the Hangduan Mountains region, where a group of mountain ranges gather. The main peak of the Mary Snow Mountains, Karagapo, 6,740 meters above sea level, is the highest in Yunnan province. Many people are drawn to witness the sunrise as it hits the mountain range. Located 27 degrees north latitude and 5,500 meters above sea level, the Jade Dragon Snow Mountain is the southmost snow mountain in Asia. While most areas on the same latitude in China stay green all year round, Further south is the well-known Mount Sanshan, or Mount Dianzang. Its main peak exceeds 4,000 meters, and its snow cap is one of Dali's four famous scenes, wind, flower, snow, and moon. Continuing south is the Aulao Mountain, which is 2,000 meters above sea level and surrounded by a sea of clouds due to the Pacific and Indian Ocean monsoons. Besides the Hangduan Mountains region, Eastern Yunnan rose as land folded, constituting the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau. This part of the land is riddled with separate hills due to water erosion of the carbonate layers, which also forms stone forests, peak clusters, karst caves, and sinkholes, constituting the Karst Plateau in Eastern Yunnan. We can also see a swath of colorful land with reddish iron-rich soil, forming central Yunnan's vast red soil plateau. Among these mountains are scattered many basins and river valleys over one kilometer, called Baze by locals. They are relatively flat with fertile soil, hence more suited for developing villages and cities. In low-lying areas, nine large plateau lakes are formed. A giant terrace has been formed in the land of Yunnan. The latitudinal extent between the highest peak to the lowest point where Red River and Nyanxi River meet measures only 960 kilometers, while the evaluation difference exceeds 6,600 meters. Such a huge difference increases water's potential energy as water flows off the giant terrace, it erodes the land, creating many small steps and making Yunnan more three-dimensional. When spring waters run down, calcium carbonate sediments form the famous limestone terraces. 
streams converge and fall over rocky ledges, creating 500-plus waterfalls, large and small, spectacular and deafening. The potential energy is unstoppable as flows merge into mighty rivers. The Dulong, Nuijiang, Langxiang, Jinxia, Red, and Nanpan rivers rush down in the mountainous Yunnan, forming China's most magnificent river gorges. Each of the six rivers is renowned and majestic. The Nuanxiang, Langxiang, and Xinxia rivers run roughly parallel in northwest Yunnan. The shortest distance between the Nuanxiang and Xinxia rivers is less than 70 kilometers, so people call them the three parallel rivers. But in Shigu town, Lichang, the south-flowing Xinxia river swings northeast and forms a V-shape, becoming the cradle of the Chinese civilization, Yangtze. So far, from whole to part, Yunnan has taken on a new look. However, the story does not end there. As the land structures change, time is about to make a difference. The difference in altitude between summits and valleys could reach thousands of meters. This means that from the subtropics of the valleys to the cold temperature zones of the peaks, one mountain in Yunnan will contain almost all the climate types from Guangdong to Heilongjiang. Therefore, a three-dimensional climate is seen here. From a broader perspective, Yunnan is just like a giant mountain with an evaluation difference of over 6,600 meters. Such a difference makes the north and south differ significantly in climate. From the hot and rainy valley plains in the south, to central plateau with mild climate, to the high and cold areas in the north, Yunnan boasts rainforests, evergreen broadleaf forests, coniferous forests, scrub meadows, glaciers, alpine deserts, and other landscapes. Such a wide variety of climate types offers more possibilities for the reproduction of lives. Throughout the Earth's ice ages, while most animals and plants became extinct elsewhere, Yunnan served as a refuge for lives as they migrated lower and southward. Thus, Craigia yunnanensis, Chinese dove tree, Mangliastrum sinicum, and many other ancient relic species survived. At the same time, however, the folded topography divided Yunnan into smaller, relatively enclosed, and independent ecological zones, where organisms gradually took different evolutionary paths, creating new species. With the passage of time, Yunnan has been home to ancient species and modern ones. The biodiversity of Yunnan has become richer, ranking first in China. Reputed as a kingdom of flora, Yunnan boasts over 19,000 species of higher plants, accounting for more than half of China's total. Home to towering Parashora cathiensis, Ficus microcarpa of over 6,000 square meters, more than 100 species of primroses, over 200 species of azaleas, and near 1,000 species of orchids, Yunnan is the loveliest garden in China. Meanwhile, known as a kingdom of fauna, Yunnan hosts nearly half of China's amphibians and freshwater fishes, and over half of its mammals and birds. Apart from humans, other primates also live here, with the highest habitat elevation. Five species of gibbons, among all seven species in China, dwell here. And for wild Asian elephants, green peacocks, and other rare animals, Yunnan is their last home in China. Different ethnic groups also manifest diversity. Yunnan had been a corridor for human migrations. People who entered and then were isolated by the semi-enclosed terrains had evolved into new ethnic groups. It's like an ethnic incubator. The vast mountainous area of southwest Yunnan is home to the Mon Khmer-speaking ethnic groups, who evolved into present-day the Bulang, Duong, and Hua ethnic groups. In the east and south, the BIU ethnic groups continued to differentiate and integrate, becoming today's Dai, Zhuang, Wu Yi, and Shui ethnic groups. While in the north and west, the Di and Tiang are more prominent in differentiation and fusion, gradually evolving Yi, Bai, Nasi, Lisu, Hani, Jingho, Achang, Jinu, Lahu, Nu, Duolong ethnic groups. There are also the Sang, the Hui, Mongols, and Pumi, the Miao, the Yao, and Manchu, and the Han Chinese, settling across various dynasties. 
With 26 long-dwelling ethnic groups, Yunnan has the largest number of ethnic groups coexisting in harmony. The flat land in the mountains and the gentle hills are all cultivated for farming. Yaks and goats in the highlands and mountains, fish in the lakes, fungi in the deep mountains, and even flowers and insects all become delicious meals served on the table. Till now, Yunnan's diverse climates still influence the locals and people elsewhere. It is the highest latitude rubber producer in the world, providing the country with important strategic resources. It's the flower garden of the world, providing two flowers for each person on Earth every year. It can grow almost all fruits, accounting for about 90% of the country's fruit families. Its tea planting area and total production rank first in the country, and its coffee production is even higher than 98% of the country. Its energy, minerals, and medicinal herbs also supply the whole country, becoming part of the lives of many people. Yunnan is a place that is hard to define. From mountains to rivers, from animals to plants, from ethnic groups to industries. Yunnan is so unique, as evidenced by its abundance, multiculture, and biodiversity. And this is Yunnan, the south of colorful clouds, a magnum opus of time and space. <laughs>